So, Trevor, I want to talk about the national reaction to the rankings last night. And, 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 and to begin, my biggest issue is we as a society, and this is going to be a bit of a non – I'm going to be very quick about this. But the issue we're having, and this is the issue with Graham's tweet and a lot of these other tweets, is people are trying to make all-encompassing arguments in one – what is a 240 character tweet? And so what we've done is we reverted to uh, pot shots and talking points instead of trying to have a real discussion. And I think the problem is it's not it, it doesn't stay on Twitter. I think those lazy, quick hitter Twitter things where you focus on like one little data point because that's the all the room you have is bleeding into the the discussions we have on other platforms. I hear those type of lazy, short, narrow focus, quick hitters in national podcasts. I hear it in national writers where they'll focus on the Northern Illinois loss, or they'll focus on the Ohio state loss in order to hype up Penn state. And we get into this really lazy, short-sighted 240 character mindset where we focus on small things. Cause we don't have enough bandwidth to have a bigger picture conversation. And I wouldn't mind that as much if I didn't see that bleeding into the committee rankings. That's my biggest concern is the things I'm hearing the committee say are these really short and like small data points where we're going to ignore all this and focus on Penn State's ranked fourth because they have the best loss of anybody or something stupid like that. Well, you know, other than Ohio State, who's behind the number two team. Yeah, but who have they won? Doesn't matter because look at their loss. Well, that doesn't make any sense. And and that's the thing that's kind of hurting this whole thing, Trevor, is nobody's willing to engage or few people are less fewer people are willing to engage in a, a more holistic argument where we actually talk about the entire resume of teams. And that was the what our rant was about this last segment is if all you're gonna talk about with Notre Dame is Marcel Reed or Northern Illinois, then what you're telling me is is you're a shallow thinker and you don't have the the knowledge or the debating ability to have a grown-up conversation where you look at it, and then other people that I respect are, are sort of following the trends instead of saying, hold on a second, this is not okay. And there's a sports writer that I respect incredibly who still can't get past the Northern Illinois loss, who won't dog Penn State because he just will only talk about their loss to Ohio State. That's all he'll focus on. And so I think Twitter in a, has done some good things, but this is where I say Twitter has had a lot of a very, very negative impact because the lack of ability to expand on points on Twitter is now bleeding into our shows, our podcasts, and our writing. And that's concerning. And we see that in how people are debating this SEC versus Big Ten versus whoever type of thing that we're going to get into here next. So I thought that was at least worth mentioning. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I, there's just – there's not enough room to put together a cohesive argument in that small amount because you're only taking snippets. What do we always talk about? You use statistics to – and then you have to use context and you have to look deeper. And that's the issue. On Twitter, you can't. Just can't. So, Trev, let's get into this conversation. The first sort of narrative that I'm saying that is really interesting is this SEC versus Big Ten conversation. And right now it's just a fan, more of a fan conversation, and you're seeing some national analysts talk about it. But I'm really curious how this is going to go in future years because right now you can't – you can't – if you're an intellectually honest Big Ten fan, you can't look at the rankings from last night and say that there isn't a very clear Big Ten bias in the rankings. Four of the top five teams are, in the, are ranked from the Big Ten. Two of those five teams have won zero games over teams that are ranked, and they've only won one game against teams that were ranked at the time. Notre Dame has three by themselves. Yeah. You know, and and when you look at the, re the, the resumes of these teams, you, it's some, okay, well, Indiana hasn't beaten anybody. Okay, uh, BYU, or Indiana hasn't lost to anybody. All right, fair. 
uh, BYU hasn't lost to anybody either, and they have two wins over teams currently ranked in the top 20. Why isn't B? Well, Indiana's blown. Okay, so now we're going to margin of victory over teams that aren't any good compared to a team that just keeps winning against good teams week after week after week. You know what I mean? So I'm with this is why I said I'm, I'm frustrated that that SEC fans are, are making these really crappy, are almost cursed, making these really crappy arguments. Because I'm like, dude, we'd have your back right now if you'd stop being morons and when you talk about Notre Dame. you It's like, <laughs> I'm trying to remember the movie. But it's like, why do you make me hurt you? Why do you make me do this to you? I didn't want to, I wanted to be on your side. I wanted to have your back. Let's all go against the Big Ten. And then you're like, oh, hold on a second. Like, why, why do you make me do this to you? Why? Why, why do you make me do this? Because we were going to have your back. We were. And if you were smart, you'd be like, like, this is where SEC fans are missing the mark, Trevor. If you were smart, you'd say, hey, hold on a second. Why isn't Notre Dame ahead of those teams? Because then they get those teams closer to you. Well, hold on a second. Notre Dame beat our best, one of our best teams on the road by 10. Yeah, I know we lost. But look what they did to to, 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 to Purdue, the only Big Ten they've, team they've played. Purdue played number one Oregon, Ohio State, or number one Oregon, number two Ohio State, and number eight Notre Dame. Notre Dame beat them by 59. Ohio State and, and Oregon beat them by combined 80. Notre Dame outgained them by more yards than Ohio State and Oregon combined. Notre Dame rushed for more yards against them than Ohio State and Oregon combined, and Ohio State got them at home. Now, that would be spin but it'd be a lot more truthful spin than what you're doing right now. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying, and not to say that Notre Dame should be ahead of Oregon or, or Ohio State. They shouldn't be. I've already, I've already said that. But to say, you need to get Penn State and Indiana closer to you, then this is a different argument. BYU should be ahead of those teams. That's the argument you should be making. Notre Dame and BYU should be ahead of those teams. Because the closer you get Penn State and, and Indiana to you, down at 10, 11, 12, you know, if Tennessee falls, if they lose to Georgia, the better it's going to be for, for you as an SEC, as a conference to say, now we can get there. So this is why you're, you're, you're silly for not jumping on the Notre Dame bandwagon and using Notre Dame to make your point for you. Right. That That's my, that's my thing. So the big, t I mean, you can't, you can't make it. No one, you said it last night, Trevor, no one has yet to make a good argument for why Penn state's in the top four. I've heard some good arguments for Indiana. Some are, you know, compelling, and I and I don't disagree with them. Others not so compelling, because there is a some legitimacy to the to the reality that, you know, yeah, Indiana hasn't beaten anybody, but hasn't Indiana done what an elite team is supposed to do to playing a bunch of nobodies? They're scoring forty three point nine points per game. They're giving up thirteen point eight points per game. You know, I, I talked about scoring offense and scoring defense against power five against FBS teams, Trev. Well, if you are power five teams, well, if you look at Indiana, Indiana ranks sixth in all of college football, third amongst teams that have played more than one game in scoring offense. They're at 39.9. If you look at Indiana's defense, Trev, they rank sixth overall in scoring defense. If you look at where they are against power five teams, they rank ninth overall at 16.3. And they would move up two spots if you remove teams that have only played one game against an FB, a power five opponent. You, uh, Okay, they haven't played anybody, but they're dominating, right? I mean, so I, you may not buy that argument, Trevor, right? But I think you can at least admit that it's compelling. Penn State, defensively, they're there. They're fifth in all of college football against you know against FB Power Four opponents and scoring defense. But Trevor, they're ranked 42nd in offense. They're scoring less than 28 points a game. They've had a lot of ugly wins. Like, what's their really big win? A 21 to 7 win over Illinois, who just got beat at home by Minnesota, who lost Probably. to North Carolina at home. You know what I mean? Who's a middle of the road ACC team? You know, like, what? I just, I, I, I've yet to hear anybody give me that. So when you look at that, that's, um, there's a lot of validity to the the Big Ten and SEC are overrated, and, I, and and the problem is I think a lot of these SEC people are not making 
they're missing the sort of the forest through the trees a little bit in, in the arguments they should be making about this. And that is that the SEC scheduled to make their teams better. The Big Ten scheduled to get as many teams as they could in the playoff. The SC, Let me rephrase it. The SEC scheduled for their teams in a way that is going to make their teams prepared to go on championship runs once they get there. The Big Ten simply scheduled the best they could to get teams in. That's the difference. Yeah, I would say that the the Big Ten, the way that I look at it is I think both conferences kind of took different approaches to what they believed that the committee was going to vote on. The Big Ten erred on the side of just overall record, which is why their out-of-conference schedules weren't hard. That's why their in-conference schedules were not hard. And I think the SEC went the route of, we want to try to give our teams a margin for error a little bit in that you do now have a two loss Alabama team in, in the top 10, right? Because we're going to give our teams enough chances to get marquee wins, but they don't have to be mm-hmm. perfect. They don't have to be 12 and 0. They don't have to be 11 and one. And unfortunately right now, the committee is airing on the side of, we just like to see how many wins you can get right. that, because it is like that's and are, who has a better loss. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. They're they're putting a lot of emphasis on losses. They're putting a lot. I mean, literally the most impressive thing on Penn State's resume right now, you could argue, is a seven point loss at home to Ohio State. Yeah, Yeah, you beat Illinois. And like I said last night, one of the most boring college football games I've watched all year. And I mean that Mm -hmm. legitimately. The IU argument. I can understand. I like I let me put it this way. I understand I don't agree IU, with it, but I understand it. I understand the IU argument more than I understand the Penn State argument. I do. But even then, like I said last night, IU has yet to play a team going into week 11 of college football that has six wins. At least Penn State beat a team that was at least one point in time ranked in Illinois. I I guess IU has never played a team that is ranked when they played them or, and it wasn't a situation where they were ranked IU beats them. And now they're no longer ranked. Right. IU has played teams that were never ranked when they played and have yet to be ranked since. I don't, I don't understand the argument there. There's two different ways to look at the Michigan game. There's one, which you brought up last night, which is, you know, the team kind of showed that they can win ugly. And that Mm -hmm. is, I will say that's an argument that I had not yet thought about. Because I'm on the side of, I think IU played their first decent team with a pulse on defense and didn't play well on offense. I think there's also a cause and effect there from a talent perspective. They, I mean, it is. Mason Graham is the best yeah. interior defensive lineman IU has faced. Sure. sure. Like, it, it's just, you know, so I, you know, I have mixed emotions about IU, but at the end of the day, they haven't lost. So I understand that. I don't think that deserves them to be fifth in the country because then again, the argument is, well, BYU also hasn't lost and they have more ranked wins. Right. The argument for IU, in my opinion, is the fact that, well, they're IU. They're not supposed to be this good. So we're going to reward them for that. Right. The, 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 here's why I would push back a little bit on Indiana a little bit because Nebraska is not a very good offense, but Nebraska does have a pretty decent defense. I mean, they held Colorado to 10, they held Ohio state to 21 you know, they've given up 7, 10, 3, 31 to Illinois, uh, 10, 7, 21, and 27 points this year. Indiana scored 56 on them. I mean, they're giving up 19 points per game this year, including the 56-point outcome against uh, uh, Indiana. They're only giving up 308 yards per game this year. They held Ohio State to 285 yards of offense. They held, you know... Uh, they've only had one team go over 390. They've only had one team go over 400 yards of offense this year. Nebraska's defense has held one, two, three, four, five teams, including Ohio State and Colorado, to under 300 yards of offense. They held another team to 301. Um, Illinois went for 381. That was not a great game. That was their, and then Indiana went for 495, right? Like, so it's kind of like the argument we use for Notre Dame. Yes. You know, they're 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 beating those they're, they're not beating good teams, but they're beating those not good teams really convincingly. You know, I mean, and, and you compare um, you know, Michigan State, like 
that's a that's a fair one. So Michigan State had 250 yards of offense against Ohio State or against Oregon. They had 246 yards of offense against Ohio State. They had 193 against Indiana. Oregon, Ohio State beat beat uh, Michigan State by 31. Oregon beat it by 21. Indiana beat it by 37. You know, uh, if you look at uh, the, the offenses, Ohio State had 493 yards against um, against uh, um, uh, uh, Michigan State. Oregon had 477. Okay, Indy only had 385, but they had 6.3 yards per play because they ran a lot fewer plays. So like, if you look at the, the the there there that's what I'm saying. I'm I, I I can buy the Indiana argument because you can at least point to those things, and that's kind of what we're pointing to with Notre Dame. A little bit also is they're playing some bad teams, but they're beating those teams worse than anybody else has beat them. All right. So, like again, I do I think they should be in the top five? No, not really. They shouldn't be ahead of BYU because I still value who you beat more than how you beat them. That's where you and I agree, right? But with Penn State, you can't even use that. Because they're barely beating bad teams, Trevor. I mean, you know, barely beat Bowling Green. Had an ugly win over UCLA. That looks a little bit better now, I guess. But you're just – there's no compelling win. Oh, you know, uh, uh, Bill Bender, my guy. I love Bill Bender. But he was, like, trying to point to the number, to the Wisconsin game as evidence. That's a good win. I said, uh, we, I said you just got – you just critiqued me for saying that Ohio State had a lot of quality wins, even though they didn't have any great wins, they had a lot of quality wins because I pointed to Iowa and you don't think I was good. And then you're going to tell me Wisconsin's a good win when a week later, Wisconsin lost to Iowa 42 to 10. You, you know what I mean? Like there's nothing that you can say about Penn State other than the Penn State that, 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 that like, like again, Trev, I'm not saying I disagree with you where Penn, Indiana should be ranked. I'm not because at, in week 10, week 11, you should have played at least one good team. I'm sorry. You just should to be a top five team. You should have at least beat one good team. And, and you know, they haven't. Penn State hasn't either. And they have a loss. And they haven't even looked good when they beat those teams. So uh, th- th- that's where they – and, again, like the SEC fans, that's where you should be focusing your time, not on Notre Dame. Not on a team that has gone out there and obliterated everybody they've played, basically, has wins over three teams that are ranked and they played, and then start lying, oh, they'd be the 10th best team on the show. Just, just, just stop. Because you make yourself look bad. When you say stupid stuff like that, you make yourself look like a homer. You're trying to p- portray yourself as a as a, a, a person who's a, a media personality or someone who's who's trying to give honest opinions, and and you're not. You're, you're being dishonest. And, and so, like, it – the whole the, going back to the to this conversation we're having, this is where the committee it bothers me what the committee is doing because of the hypocrisy of what they're doing. They're going to say, "Well, we focus on good losses." All right, fine. Then why isn't SMU ranked higher? Because their loss was to a three point loss to number six BYU, but they actually have two top twenty five wins. So why isn't SMU higher? Why isn't BYU higher than Penn State? They have no losses and two top 25 wins. You know, like, where would SMU be ranked ni- right now if they'd have beat, S- beat BYU? Probably top five because they'd have one over BYU. They'd have one over Louisville on the road. You know what I mean, Trev? Like, that's... I, that's my thing is you're rewarding here. Here's what it boils down to for me, Trev. They're rewarding the big 10 for purposely scheduling soft. That's what they're doing. And that's my problem because Georgia had to play Texas, Bama and Ole Miss, right? Bama. Let me, let me pull up all the, these resumes real quick. Trev Bama had to play um, Georgia. They have to play at Tennessee. They have to play at LSU, right? That's that's three good teams. LSU had to play at South Carolina, Ole Miss at home, at Texas A&M, home against Alabama. Texas A&M has to play at Florida, at South Carolina, home against LSU, 
home against Texas. Like they're all playing each other. They're all playing each other. The only exception is really Texas, but they still had to play Georgia and A&M on the road. You know, they didn't have to play Bama or Ole Miss. Like they got a little bit of an easy slate where if you look at the top four teams in the Big Ten, Ohio State's the only one that has to play multiple of that group. Indiana only plays one. Penn State only plays one. Oregon only plays one. And it's all Ohio State. They don't play each other. Oregon didn't have to play Penn State. Yeah, they would play Michigan. Everybody knew Michigan wasn't going to be as good this year. But even if Michigan was good, that's only two. They didn't have to play Penn State. You know, Indiana got a, an easier slate this year. Whereas the SEC said, and and Georgia scheduled Clemson out of conference. Texas scheduled, Texas chose to play Oregon. They didn't have it thrust upon them like Ohio, I mean, uh, Michigan. They didn't have it thrust upon them like Oregon did. They chose to play that. Oregon chose to play their best non-conference game against Boise State. Now, Boise State's a good football team. But I'm sorry, that should not be your toughest non-conference game. It should not be. Alabama chose to play Wisconsin non-conference. You know what I mean? Like, that's a different animal. A on the road. You, you saw a lot of these, uh, not all, Texas A&M chose to play Notre Dame. You're seeing a lot of these SEC teams go out there and say, hey, LSU chose to play USC on a neutral field. You know, Tennessee chose to play NC State who on a neutral field, who traditionally has been a better football team than they are this season, right? So you look at it, Trevor, and you're like, the Big Ten teams, and, and look, I think Ohio State's got a great resume because of who they got in conference, but Ohio State's non-conference resume is embarrassing. They played Akron, Western Michigan, and Marshall. That's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. You know, and and to a degree, I kind of understand it because you do have to play at Oregon. You'd have to play at Penn State. You have to play Michigan. You had to play at Michigan State. You get Iowa at home. All right, but that's so the, Georgia did that, and they've got to go freaking play Clemson on a neutral field. You know, Penn State went out and played the old mighty Mountaineers of West Virginia, Bowling Green, and Kent State in their non-conference. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's my frustration, Trevor, is a lot of these teams played really soft, non purposely played really soft non-conference schedules. Michigan did the same thing last year. In I mean, Indiana, Florida International, Western Illinois, and Charlotte. Like, the committee's rewarding teams that purposely scheduled soft, and they're punishing teams that purposely scheduled harder. And that's my point. That's my beef with those two things. And so really the committee's to blame, in my opinion, because, hey, you know what the Big Ten is doing. Punish them. But you're not going to do that when the freaking the leader of, the, of that group is the current athletic director at Michigan, knowing that those conferences get rewarded by the more teams they have in the top 25 or in the playoff. It's a conflict of interest. And that's why they shouldn't have people that are currently affiliated with schools on the committee. That's my issue. Yeah, I'm, That's I'm with where you. That's the SEC I mean, people have a beef. Well, I mean, and here's my here's my issue with the Big Ten, and this is why I don't respect the Big Ten. And people that know me closely know that I have never respected the Big Ten. This is them every year. Every year, this is the Big Ten. Their out of conference schedule is Charmin Ultrasoft, and they just they know that AP rankings, coaching poll rankings will reward them for just winning. That's year in and year out. So then that's why you get all of these Fox big noon kickoffs of number five Penn State versus number two Ohio State. And then you go back and look, and Penn State's played the equivalent of nobody. And it's every year. It's every single year. The Penn State one is the one that I cannot wrap my head around. I would understand if they were, well, maybe not understand, but I could at least see the argument. If Penn State was one of those like perennial good programs, you know, and like maybe they snuck in a natty or at least a national championship appearance, you know, they haven't even done that. They they don't beat the good teams on their schedules. And half the time, they don't beat the mediocre teams that are on their schedules. Penn State is the same team every year. And how are they rewarded? They're the fourth highest ranked team in the country right now. I don't understand. I, I, I don't. That was, that was Michigan State for a while. Michigan State would schedule Western Michigan, Central Michigan, Eastern Michigan, and Toledo, 
and then they would be four and zero going into their first Big Ten matchup, and that's and and then that's it. That's the storyline. It's just a historic undefeated Big Ten matchup. That's the Big Ten every single year. It is. Outside of, I will give credit where credit's due, when Ohio State was scheduling teams like Notre Dame out of conference. I'll give you that. You know, you scheduled a home and home with Notre Dame. But I just, that's the Big Ten every year for me, man. And I was, that was the one thing that I was worried about going into these rankings for the playoffs is how were they going to judge that? Are you going to reward teams for playing the equivalent of nobody? But they're just winning? Or are you going to reward teams that they're chose only to have doing that with the Big Ten, Trevor? That's what I'm they're saying. not rewarding BYU for actually scheduling SMU non-conference and winning all their games. That's the thing. It is it is being purposely they're purposely rewarding the Big Ten over other conferences. S and here, ACC top team in the ACC right now, record wise, SMU. They have one loss out of conference. That was a three-point loss to the current number six team in the country. That's not that much worse of a loss than Penn State losing at Ohio State. But the difference is SMU has actually won games against good teams. They went on the road and beat the current committee's number 19 team on the road. You, you, you know what I mean? Like, okay, so so that right there, those two games right there are enough for SMU to, should you argue, they should be ahead of ahead of Penn State. Plus, they're a more dominant football team than Penn State is or has been for most of the season. And that that's that's my frustration, Trevor, is is it's only being applied to one team. Penn State, SMU this year has outscored their opponents by 18.3 points per game. Penn State so far this season has outscored their opponents by 17.2. Bigger margin of victory. Power four team only losses to a top undefeated top 10 team have a top 25 win. That's my thing is you're correct, but they're only doing it in one direction and it's the big 10. They're not, you know, you say, well, they're rewarding Texas. True. But how much do you think they're rewarding Texas for going on the road and blowing out Michigan? You don't think they're – like, clearly the committee was impressed with Texas and, and, and Indiana beating Michigan. Clearly. Because that was enough to – like, to your point, you, 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 you're at home against a 5-5 five and five Michigan team. You barely win. You need a fourth down stop to win that game. And you leapfrog Tennessee, who has a win over Bama? Oh, wait, the committee chairs the Michigan AD. Now, now it makes sense. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a very clear conflict of interest when a current athletic director of a Big Ten team is voting on a playoff system where you get rewarded by having more teams in the playoff. Why are we talking about this? But you numb nuts want to run your mouths about Notre Dame. It's frustrating. You, you Like, that's what our fear was, Trevor, is are they going to reward teams for playing soft schedules? And right now, the committee's rewarding teams that have played soft schedules. They are. And I don't like getting into the, well, what would this team's record be if they played Georgia's re- I hate that because that's the whole, well, if Notre Dame played so-and-so in a neutral field, they'd be favored to lose. Yeah, Notre Dame was favored to lose at Texas A&M. How'd that go? So don't care about all that. You know, I don't care about who's favored to do what. Wasn't – I. I What's your resume? You got to beat somebody. You got to beat somebody. And the committee saying, don't worry about beating somebody as long as you win all your games and you're a Big Ten team. Like, that's what the SEC should be raising holy heck about. If I'm Greg Sankey, I'm calling up Tony Petiti or whatever that guy's name is. I'm saying, hey, after watching what's going on right in the playoff rankings, I want to put a pause on our little partnership. Because y'all aren't acting in good faith. You're not acting in good faith with what you're doing. You're not. And what's even dumber is the Big Ten gave their best team the toughest schedule in conference because they knew they could handle it. But then they gave everybody else this really soft crap schedule. 
you know, where the big the SEC was like, hey, year one of this new thing, we're going to have Georgia play these games. We're have Bama, Georgia, Georgia, Texas. We're going to have, you know, Oklahoma's going to play all these good teams. Like, we're going to put some good, we're going to put a good product on the field. You know what I mean? And and Archer said, to be fair, Michigan and USC sucking this year didn't help. That That's true. But Indiana was scheduled to play Michigan, not Penn State, not Oregon. Oregon was scheduled to play Michigan. That's it. They didn't get Penn State. My point is the SEC teams, with the exception of Texas, are playing like three, four really good games. USC has played Penn State. They don't play Oregon. They don't play Ohio State. They don't play Indiana. They tried to schedule USC into success as well, Trev. They gave them Michigan, and that's it. Penn State at home. Like they tried to give Penn, they tried to give USC a, a, a clear path too. USC was like, no, we're good. We want to suck. You know what I mean? So that that that's kind of that's my issue. Is the pen the Big Ten clearly scheduled in a way to try to get as many teams in there as, as possible with softer schedules, where the SEC is, we're gonna try to get teams in there because we're gonna have all of our teams play each other. They're gonna go whoop teams out of conference, which they didn't, by the way, which I think hurts the SEC a little bit. And as I'm saying, the SEC is being punished for actually scheduling well, not just in conference either, Trevor. Look at what the SEC has done out of conference and compare that to what the Big Ten has done out of conference. I think the thing that I don't like big picture is the precedent that the committee is setting moving forward. What, what motivation do teams have to go and schedule big marquee games? You know, like if I can play IU schedule and just win, yeah, I, I, I'm winning convincingly. Well, you better beat Charlotte by that much. I'm winning convincingly. Well, you better beat UCLA by that much. Well, I'm winning convincingly. Yeah, you better be like, yeah, I just, again, I, I don't want to just use IU as the example here because like Penn State has also played an ungodly soft schedule and the best team that they played, they lost to. Surprise, surprise. But you're setting the precedent moving forward that you, they the committee's not even favoring the type of win. It's just you just win because you could make the argument with IU. It's like oh well, it's margin of victory. They're destroying folks. Okay, well Penn State isn't, and Penn State is ranked higher than IU, and Penn State has a loss. So what's what's the precedent then? Is it we don't care if you play bad teams as long as you blow them out, or are you just saying we don't care if you play bad teams, just win? Well, what if we play a good team? You can lose. As long as it's still a good team and it's only once, okay? Do we have to play any of the ranked teams outside of that? No. You you can still be the fourth best team in the country. Okay. So, I, like, it's frustrating. It's really, really frustrating. And in that sense, I do sympathize with the SEC because they're just like, yo, are we just going to be penalized for having you know, the schedule that we have and having the same record as a team that has yet to play a team with – no wins over a, an opponent with six wins yet? It is what it is. It's it's worse than that. Because what you're doing is, is you're forcing the SEC to also schedule tough out of conference. And here's why I say that. It's the depth of the SEC currently compared to the depth of the Big Ten is such that if the SEC, it's almost impossible to schedule your your teams for paths like Penn State and Indiana have. It's almost impossible because you can say, okay, well, well, in in theory, the the Big Ten has Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, Oregon, USC, and Washington. Six kind of re relatively recent power teams. The SEC has Texas, Oklahoma, New, Bama, LSU, Texas A and M. Georgia, Tennessee, Florida, who's, you know, had some recent success and ha is, a, is a chance for a – did I say Ole Miss yet? Ole Miss. I mean, it, the depth of that league is – South Carolina – I mean, the depth of that league is significantly greater than that of the Big Ten, and even with all the new additions. And so it's easier to, to schedule away from losses in conference where the big – the SEC can't avoid that. I mean – Bama lost to Vanderbilt for Pete's sake. You know what I mean? Like, 
who almost beat Texas. Not almost. They played Texas competitively. They didn't almost beat them. You know, like Georgia goes on the road and beats beats the mess out of out of Texas, but then they also have to play at Bama. They also have to play at Ole Miss. They also play Tennessee at home. You know, I mean, Tennessee goes out and beats Alabama, but then they got to go play at Georgia and they got to play at Arkansas. They got to play at Oklahoma. You know, it's it's almost impossible to schedule an eleven win season in the SEC. It really it, without doing it blatantly. So because of that. The SEC can't can't afford to say, well, we're we're got a soft schedule. As long as we lose to Bama close, we'll be in, because you can't guarantee that that's the only loss you're going to take. Which means now we have to go schedule a good team out of conference because we have to try to, you know, overcome the potential second loss with a big win out of conference, which only enhances your potential of losing, which we saw with Texas A and M getting beat by Notre Dame, with Florida getting crushed by Miami, with. You know, Georgia losing to Clemson in past years, right? But, you know, like when they were playing in the mid-2010s, Georgia's going to be playing – Georgia played Notre Dame. Georgia's going to be playing Michigan – I mean, Ohio State, I believe, coming up soon. Didn't Ohio State and Georgia schedule a game here in the next 10 years? Right? So, like, that's the thing, Trevin. Texas is scheduling Notre Dame here coming up soon. So that's the thing is the SEC is almost in kind of a catch-22. If we have these much tougher in-conference schedules – and we're beating each other up, we can't afford to schedule the crap that the Big Ten is scheduling out of conference because we won't have enough strong enough overall resumes. That's the problem. So you're backing the SEC to an even tighter corner in that regard. And I don't think you're going to like the outcome, you know, because what it's going to do is you're going to do all this, and what's going to happen is you're now going to force the SEC to say, okay, we're going to schedule our top five or six teams for success. And we're going to have about 13 weeks of really crappy football. Part of what's made this season so good is the parity we've seen in the SEC, the ACC, the Big 12. It's the one conference with no parity. The Big 10, and we rarely talk about Big 10 games. They're getting viewed because Big 10 fans are there. But eventually they're going to stop because people are just going to be like, I'm tired of watching crap football. I don't give a crap about you know USC playing Minnesota. I'm going to go watch the SEC game. I'm going to go watch the high scoring Big 12 game. I'm going to watch, you know, this. And that that's the that's the issue that I see with this. And that's what Greg Sankey needs to be railing against. Hey, Big Ten, how about you guys actually not do this and challenge yourselves and don't schedule like pansies? You know what I mean? Uh, just give it a shot. See what happens. Or or at the very least, schedule schedule your out of conference and, and just copy and paste what Ohio State's doing. Like Ohio State, like year in and year out, has scheduled a, a good out of conference game, which is why I'm giving them a bit of a pass this year. Because this isn't this year's an anomaly year, and I think yeah. part of it's because they play Oregon on the road and Penn State absolutely. on the road and Michigan. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But in 22 and 23, they played Notre Dame. In 2021, they played Oregon. So, like, I'll give you, I'll give you those for sure. But I just, yeah, I did. 2020 is a weird season. So I don't, I always look at that season with an asterisk. But, you know, I just, I'll never understand it. I think it's a bad precedent being set moving forward. But you're right. I mean, it's the product that the Big Ten is putting out on the field now. Like, just nobody cares. Nobody cares about a mm-hmm. primetime matchup between Minnesota and Iowa. I don't care if they play for the – whatever they play for, the Paul Bunyan trophy or whatever it is. Like, mm-hmm. I, it's just – it's not fun, good football to watch. I'd rather watch South Carolina play LSU because that's going to be a better game. You know? Yep. I, I, it's just – no, I'm with you. Yep. No, another one when you look at, at it, Trevor, is this discussion between Georgia and Texas. Hmm. That's a narrative that I find very compelling. And we're gonna kind of we're gonna kind of wrap it up here soon. We're not gonna get to some of the other things that we wanted to get to because we are uh, gonna go really long because we have a buy so hold coming up. But the Texas Georgia thing, and I wanted to get your opinion on this, Trevor, is fascinating because Georgia last week was ranked ahead of Texas because they had the same record, and Georgia beat Texas at Texas convincingly, fifteen point game in which they dominated for four quarters. I mean, Texas made like a little mini comeback, but it like. Georgia shut it down pretty quickly, right? And say, well, you know, how how can Texas be ranked ahead of Georgia? And I'm like, listen, it's 
the 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 issue I have is again, it's that very sh- narrow focus. It's not just about head to head. Head to head only matters if your overall resumes are similar, and your resumes are not similar because you have two losses in which you let trailed by double digits. Texas has one close win all year. Would you agree with that, Trevor? Like they really only have one close win all year. Like every other game they've played has been not overly competitive. Would would you agree with that? I mean, it, yeah. I, I count the three point win over Vanderbilt. They beat Colorado State by fifty two. They beat Michigan by nineteen, and it was not that close. They beat UTSA by forty nine. Losing Monroe by forty eight. Mississippi State by twenty two. Georgia only beat them by ten. They beat Oklahoma by 31. They beat Florida by 32. George only beat them by 14. Like, if all you got is, well, we beat them. They have no top 25 wins. All right, cool. But it's about your overall resume. And eye test does matter. And Georgia has been winning ugly all year. Like, the only – they've got two great wins. Like, but they have played a lot more bad football this year than they've played good football. They looked great. They looked great in the second half against Clemson, looked great in the second half against Alabama, and they looked great against Texas. They looked like crap against Kentucky for the entire game. They slept walk through the Auburn game. They're deep, they, they, Mississippi State gave them a game. Florida gave them a game with their third-string quarterback playing over half the game, and they just went and got smacked by, by, uh, by Ole Miss. In a game that that wasn't overly competitive, Trevor. I mean, you know, Ole Miss had 396 yards of offense, 6.2 yards per play. Georgia had 245 yards of offense, 3.83 yards per play. I mean, Ole Miss had more passing yards than Georgia had total yards. It was a complete dominant game. Bama had them down 28 to nothing before they let them come back in that game. Like the the problem is, yes, you have the head to head. Yes, you've played a tougher schedule but you have not looked very good against that schedule. If you put any other team's helmet and name on Georgia's team and had, let's just say SMU had the same exact resume that Georgia had, neutral site blowout over Clemson, beat Texas on the road, got smacked by Ole Miss, had a fluky comeback in a game where they were getting blown up by Alabama, barely beat Kentucky, barely beat Mississippi State, barely beat Florida. Do you think that people would be clamoring for SMU to be in the college football playoff right now? No, they wouldn't. Because we have eyes. We see that Georgia's just not that kind of team right now. Do they deserve to be in the playoff if they beat Tennessee and win out? Yes, they do. They deserve to be in the playoff and go play somebody else on the road. I will say I will say you may you, you can disagree feel free to disagree if you want Trev but when you have beaten Clemson the way that they beat Clemson when you have beaten Texas on the road by two touchdowns when you have beat Tennessee at home however they beat them that's a that's a re- and, and if they beat Georgia Tech who's a good football team that's a lot of really good wins so you you then can get in the playoff cuz you'll knock Tennessee out but right now, today, you don't deserve to be in. But you can play yourself in. So that's why I like, Georgia fans, calm down. You're going to get a chance to play yourselves in. Just calm down. But right now, Georgia does not look like a top-12 team. They don't. And, and right now, they don't deserve to be in. That could change this weekend. But the eye test has to matter, Trevor. And the reality is, is outside of one set. I, I just refuse to let one weekend or of, for a team define their entire season. That's true for Notre Dame. That's true for Georgia. That's true for Texas. That's true for Alabama. That's true for Ohio State. That's true for Oregon. That's true for everybody. You know what I mean? You have to let the entire season determine who you are. And right now, as of today, Georgia does not have a playoff resume. Oh, they beat Bama. You know, they they beat Texas. Okay, well, let's put Vanderbilt in then because they beat Alabama. Just as convincingly as... Texas beat Georgia. If you want to talk about game control and stuff like that, right? Put Kentucky and they beat Ole Miss who beat the crap out of you. And Kentucky only lost to Georgia by a point, you know? So my only, 
I, I agree with you that they would deserve to be in if they beat Tennessee. I just don't know who they would pass. Tennessee. They'd knock out Tennessee. They would rise up just a spot, and Tennessee would fall back, fall out. Okay. Because like okay. Tennessee can only can only live on that Bama win for so long. You know what I mean? Like that. That's and that's all Tennessee really would have. They'd have wins over Chattanooga, a five and five NC State team, Kent State, the worst team in college football. Uh, they'd have a win over Oklahoma, who I think is five and five right now and has a chance to be five and seven because they got to play Bama and LSU left. Uh, they have a loss to Arkansas, who right now is five and four, uh, has to play Texas this weekend and still has to play at Missouri. So they're going to be potentially at best six and six. Uh, they lost to um, let me get pulled. Uh, lost to Arkansas. They bar- they beat barely beat Florida by six. They they scrapped by Alabama. That's a good win. Uh, had an ugly win over Kentucky. Decent win over Mississippi State. Then they'll have to beat UTEP and Vanderbilt. They have a really ugly resume outside the Bama win if they lose to Georgia. Because right now you're hanging your hat on, they just had a bad day against Arkansas. But outside of that, they got to win over Bama. And hey, yeah, they're winning ugly, but they're winning. You lose to Georgia, and all of a sudden you're, you don't have that type of resume anymore. It, just like with Georgia, last week they're number three. Right, because they had that you know that one really good win, and then a bunch of you know ugly wins, and then like, but once you got that second loss, we saw Georgia go from three to twelve quickly, and and I think the same thing has happened to Tennessee, because Georgia just needs to go up, what really one spot, two spots actually to get in, because they would well if BYU wins out, then they'd be fine, but if if BYU loses out in the SEC title game or a Big Twelve title game, they could be in trouble, but they. Because they're 12 right now. They're the first team out, right, as of right now? Yeah. So they need Miami and BYU to win the league (laughs) and then beat Tennessee. So that would be my thing, Trev. Do you think Tennessee would stay ahead of them? I don't know. I'm just – I'm looking at everything, like, as a whole. I do think Tennessee would drop below them, but then I go and look at, like, Texas A&M is not out of the hunt yet for winning the SEC. Texas A&M, I think, would leap them if they beat Texas. Yeah. But then you'd say, okay, but then should Georgia be ahead of Texas? Because then they'd have identical records and Georgia'd have more wins and they'd have the head to head. Right? Like, but sure. like that's why I think there's still a lot to happen here. You know, like yeah, there's there there's a lot to that can go. Like we're in the Big Ten, you look at the remaining schedules and you're just like, okay, Penn State has to play Purdue and Minnesota and Maryland. Whoop de freaking do. Indy, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. who's Oregon got left the rest of the way? I, I believe that's pretty soft, right? Like they don't play anybody. Yeah, they only ranked. have two game. They only have two games left, anyway. Yeah, I mean they've got Wisconsin and Washington. Mm. Who can you know what I mean? So like the Big Ten's going to be sleep, and this is going to hurt the Big Ten when it comes to playoff time, because outside of Ohio State, none of these teams are going to have been challenged in a while. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean Big Ten's going to struggle in the postseason outside of Ohio State, in my opinion. I really believe that because they're just not challenging themselves. And we all year we've seen teams that don't challenge themselves. That's what happened to Texas. They, they not not on their not it's not their fault. I mean, I think you, when you play Michigan on the road early in the season, you expect to be challenged. I don't think you expect well that's going to be the year that they're down. But it just happened that they weren't challenged, and then they go play Georgia, and all of a sudden that speed of that game looks a little bit different. Look what happened to Navy. Navy was overwhelming teams. And then they play a team like Notre Dame, who's the first really good team they played all year. And it's just the speed of the game. Just they couldn't handle the speed of the game. You know what I mean? So I, I think a lot of those Big Ten teams outside of Ohio State are going to struggle in the postseason because they just haven't pushed themselves. And they and the league didn't push them. They haven't been challenged. Sure. Oregon, there was all oh, Oregon's going to do. Oregon's going to face some team that's had to really battle in November and win a first-round game. Like, worst case for, for Oregon is like Bama – Georgia, Ole Miss, some combination of those teams are in the 8-9 game. That, like, the worst case scenario for Oregon. It's like, we haven't played a good game since we played Ohio State. We haven't played a good team since we played Ohio State in October. And we're going to be off for three weeks. Assuming they even be, I don't even think they're going to beat Ohio State, to be honest with you. I think Ohio State's going to get the bye. But it's going to get, and now there's a scenario where Oregon and the first round has to play number 12 Georgia or number 12 Ole Miss. You you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's going to be interesting. And, and Penn State's going to have to play, you know, if they're the sixth seed, number 11 Georgia, 
or number 11 Bama or number 11 Ole Miss. You know what I mean? And it might not go well for the Big Ten. It just might not go well for those teams. So that's kind of my thing. But, yeah, if it, it, it's going to get crazy, Trev, if A&M beats Texas and Georgia wins out. There's going to be – that debate after that week is going to be fierce. But I don't think it's much of a debate. I think at that point in time, Georgia would have a much better resume than Texas. But you guys, like, if they're both 10-2, and two, and – now, the question is who plays in the SEC title game? But if they're both 10 to 2 and Georgia won the head to head by 15 at Texas, I, I don't, you know, by only three points less than what Georgia lost to Ole Miss, Georgia's other loss is to Bama, Texas' other loss is to AM. Georgia has a better, two better losses than, than you could argue that, that, that um, Texas has. But right now, Texas belongs. And if Texas wins out, then they will stay there. If they don't, then they'll fall. That's that's what I think. All right, Trev, we, there's a lot we wanted to get to um, real quick. We wanted to do like this really cool what they got right, what they got wrong. We'll just quickly talk about it just briefly so we can get to the buy so hold. Um, number one, we both agreed that Oregon and Ohio State should be one and two. We felt that uh, it was – we were surprised, but they got it right to see Miami and Georgia drop. The one thing we wanted to get into was why did Georgia drop further than Miami? Because Miami was ahead behind them, and then now they're ahead of them, even though Georgia lost to a better team. We think they corrected the Indiana BYU leaping Tennessee. You think both teams deserve to be ahead of Tennessee? I really only felt definitely good about BYU. I'm not necessarily against Indiana, but I just felt better about BYU because they used to have good wins. And we felt that jumping Ole Miss up higher was good because, yes, Ole Miss has two losses. But Ole Miss led late in both of those losses. They were they weren't bad. They were bad losses in that that they lost to a not very good Kentucky team, right? But it wasn't like they got blown out. Like they they were in more control of that game than Notre Dame was against Northern Illinois, for example. Because I actually said something wrong. I kept saying that Notre Dame never led Northern Illinois after the first quarter. That's actually incorrect. Notre Dame did take a 14-13 lead in the second half and then let Northern Illinois go down to kick field goal. So I, I keep forgetting about that. Um, what they got wrong, we talked about the Big Ten. I felt beat Boise should be higher because they have a blot win over Washington State, who's 18th. They also took Oregon down to the wire, and they've been pretty convincing in their wins. Uh, we felt that Colorado and Kansas State were ranked too high, that the Big 12 is getting too much credit beyond BYU. Trevor put a list together. They have a, they had, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They had nine, the Big 12 have, had nine out of conference losses to other Power Four teams, including TCU getting smashed by, by SMU. Colorado got smashed by Nebraska, who's a middle of the road Big 10 team who just got beat by Indiana by 49. Uh, UCF lost to Florida, who's not very good. West Virginia lost to Penn State and Pitt. Uh, Illinois lost to, uh, or Kansas lost to Illinois. It's actually a decent loss. Texas Tech got smashed by Washington State. Uh, Cincinnati also got beat by Pitt, and Houston got beat by Oklahoma, who's a middle of the road, not very good Penn State team or SEC team. So uh, they were one, two, three, four, five, six. They were six and nine against other Power Four teams in the non conference. I would rank LSU ahead of them, I would rank Louisville ahead of them, both of them. I would rank Clemson ahead of both of them. I mean, they, they should be in the 20s in my – they should be ranked, but they should be in the 20s. I mean, Colorado's best win this year is probably North Dakota State. Kind of says it all, right? Them or Colorado State. I mean, I, right. I like I don't – Your best win's over a non-Power 4 team. Like, Maybe Texas just, Tech. I guess maybe, maybe who got destroyed by Washington state who you have ranked behind. Like here's the thing. Washington state has one loss to number 13 Boise. They beat Texas tech by 21 points. Texas tech just knocked off one of your undefeated teams a week ago and just got, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like, okay, your Washington state's win over Texas tech was more convincing than Colorado's win over Texas tech. You have a, you have a common opponent. 
that Washington beat far more convincingly, and Washington has a better record. You know, so mm-hmm. um, and I believe two of the Big Twelve teams didn't even play a Power Four team. At Kansas conference. State's best non-conference was against Tulane, and they only beat them by a touchdown. That's it. So, who was in the first month of their new staff? I would like to see that game get played now, the way the two lanes playing now. So those those are things, Trev, that we thought and 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 I felt that I feel SMU's undervalued. I think if SM, I think if Clemson had SMU's resume, they'd be probably a top ten team. Same exact resume. You think they'd be ninth? Yeah, I could see them being like a like a nine seed if they had if they had the orange and white. Man, yeah, I could see that. Their only loss would be to a number six team in the country by three points. Yeah. You know, they'd have a road win over Louisville, that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think they'd be a top 10 team. Yeah. Yeah. I I think they'd be a top 10 team. So, you know, I think they're doing that to position BYU to have a better win. But I think both of those teams are overrated. So, overall, Trev, that was our takeaways from the – um playoff committee anything you want to add before we finish this up and get to our buy so hold trev no i think we covered most of it man it's a good discussion i just yeah. i'm frustrated because of what i'm seeing and you know now you're gonna have to root for like minnesota to pull off an upset or purdue to, i mean you know I, and the other thing i'm very curious to see how are they going to handle notre dame and penn state when they eventually have identical records and two common opponents, because that's right now they have no common opponents. But by the end of the season, they will have two common opponents. They will have played on the same exact field. Both games will be played on the same exact field. If Notre Dame's wins are more convincing, how does that impact Notre Dame's ranking against against Penn State? Because if they don't change it, Trev, this is my whole point. If they don't, if Notre, Dame, let's say Notre Dame, let's say Purdue beats Penn State beats Purdue, say thirty-one to ten, and let's say Notre Dame beats USC you know, 34 to 17, right? Notre Dame would have two far more convincing wins than Penn State, better, you know, over common opponents that have more ranked wins than Penn State. The only justification you'd have is they have a better loss. That's a nonsensical way of ranking teams. So, yeah. Uh, Got a quick super chat from Gary L. (laughs) Brian, in your show with Bill Bender, you jokingly mentioned take the over in the Colorado versus Texas Tech game. I did. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, based on the $40 super chat, I'm assuming that you won, uh, Gary. So I appreciate that. We also had a super chat from Craig Sebring. I'm having fun watching their name scoring and stopping teams and like the people hating us. I'll be honest with you. I kind of like it too. Uh, I'm enjoying clapping back at people because I, you know, and, and, um, I just hope this team allows me to continue to do that for a while. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's uh, it's fun, you know, when you can look and say, boy, Notre Dame has gone on a stretch of really dominant play, man. This is fun to watch. Really fun to watch. Yeah. And uh, hopefully they can keep it rolling. Yeah. I'm enjoying it, man. I mean, it's just the farther Notre Dame gets away from September 7th, but the more opposing fan bases and, and, and people bringing up the Northern Illinois loss, that just tells me one thing. You don't want to play Notre you don't. All signs are pointing in that direction. And Agreed. so if the if the September 7th game is what you have to bring up to help make it feel better that you're most likely going to play Notre Dame, whatever you got to do, partner. Whatever you got to do. Yeah. Yep. I, I love it. Hit that like button, folks. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Share this podcast. Give us a five-star review. We would greatly, greatly appreciate that. If you've not done so, make sure you sign up for the message board at boards.irishbreakdown.com. Guys, I promise you, you'll love what we've got. I had some linebacker recruiting intel on the board yesterday. We had a right recap of their recruiting visits. I'll have some uh, game breakdowns coming up the next day or two. Uh, it's just been super slam, guys, with some business stuff. So I apologize for not getting that out sooner. But I, I will get the Even if it's super late, I'll get it out this week. But uh, it's just one of the many, many reasons to be on the Irish Breakdown message board, which you can find at boards.com dot irishbreakdown.com.